What's going on friends and family? Welcome back to a new video. Been on a bit of a hiatus, but this one is about the new 2017 iMac. Now it's been three weeks or four weeks since WWDC has passed and you're probably wondering where the heck is the new 2017 iMac video? Well, here you guys go. I'm going to give you my three top tips if you need to upgrade to the 2017 iMac. So here is tip number one. If you already have the 2015 iMac, if you can afford the upgrade to the 2017 right now, wait you know a few weeks to sell your 2015 model, then go ahead and do that. Now I say that in the context that your 2015 iMac is probably like a one terabyte fusion drive, maybe 16 gigs of RAM, um, lowest or mid tier CPU for the core um, i5. And if you don't have an SSD, such as like the one terabyte fusion drive, if that's the case, then definitely feel free to upgrade to the 2017, sell your 2015 model when you get a chance. Now, if your cash flow just simply isn't there, then your best bet is to upgrade your 2015 model right now. Upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, um, get a external SSD, such as a Samsung T3 or the Lessee Thunderbolt drive. Both of those are gonna be much faster than your built-in one terabyte fusion drive. Uh, keep the fusion drive for just applications, um, dump storage, things like that, where you don't need fast um, access, fast read and write. The graphics card you can't upgrade, um, but in my opinion, you can still get away with even the mid or low tier uh, Radeon R390 380 that comes with the 2015 model. And that's from someone who uses After Effects and um, Premiere Pro 2017. I don't use Photoshop to that extent, so you creative designers out there will probably need something beefier, which leads us into tip number two. Now tip number two is for anyone out there, which I'm gonna assume most of you are into either video editing um, or graphic design using uh, Photoshop, Lightroom, things like that. There isn't going to be a huge, huge difference if you're using the Adobe Suite and you have a 2015 model. The reason why is because Adobe has optimized their software suite to work better with Nvidia graphics cards utilizing their CUDA cores. And that's just plain and simple. There's no getting around that. Now, if you're a video editor using a DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro 10, then you know, you'll know you be okay either way. Um, Final Cut Pro 10, I like a lot because it's extremely optimized. And if you have an Intel-based CPU and you're a Final Cut Pro 10 user, that's really where it shines over using um, Premiere is because the Intel QuickSync technology has been optimized for um, assisting video encoding on the CPU side in congruence with your GPU. So when you're uh, transcoding or exporting media to H.264 for you know, YouTube or any other platform, it tends to be just a tiny bit faster. Um, but again, we're kind of talking about like if you have two really low end systems and you're just chugging for resources, then you know Final Cut Pro 10 on paper is faster than um, Premiere. But you know, for the price point, if you can't afford the 2017 model and you're running a 2015 model, then I would really see uh, no reason not to upgrade to the 2017 model. Unless you're trying to save up for something specific, like a, a new camera, um, perhaps a new lens, maybe you need uh, better audio equipment, or perhaps maybe it's just a, a tough financial situation right now, so you feel like you just can't upgrade, you know, you're not gonna be losing much. Just stick with your 2015 model and you'll be just fine. And last but not least, tip number three is basically gonna come down to if you like to use Windows or if you like to use uh, Mac OS Sierra, Mac OS 10, whatever you wanna call it. I think at that point is really going to help define your decision um, if you're gonna buy a 2017 iMac, whether you're upgrading or if you're just deciding to move from Windows um, to the Apple environment and the Apple ecosystem. And pound for pound, it really depends on, you know, if you're looking to go from a Mac to a PC or if you're looking to go from a PC to a Mac, what is it specifically about that environment, um, the UX, the user experience that you, uh, that you sort of cater to, right? What do you like more about it than the other? If you're looking for like pound for pound performance comparison, it really depends on what you're using. You know, if you're a Adobe Suite user, then if you're looking for, you know, maximum performance up, you know, like 120% scale, whatever that can be, um, then yeah, you can't argue that the iMac cannot perform a Windows-based PC uh, with a custom built setup. You know, your render times, if you're a video editor, may be a little bit faster um, on a custom built PC. 
and yeah you do get a better bang for your buck so to speak you know but again we go back to user experience if you don't like using windows 10 then you're pretty much going to be using um, os sierra that user experience so it's okay not to have the fastest performance you're still going to be able to edit all your videos edit your photos um, without such a slack in performance. I actually stopped using my custom built PC um, a few months ago because well one, I upgraded to the 2016 uh, MacBook Pro since I travel a lot as a, um, as a cinematographer. That's probably why you haven't seen many videos on this channel is because I've been busy with uh, my other channel. But you know, for the most part, my 2016 iMac with After Effects Premiere Pro um, using Dynamic Link it works beautifully, you know, Final Cut Pro 10 still works awesome like it always will. And yes, I am losing a bit of performance when it comes to um, not using my custom built PC, but for the most part, it's easier for me to um, create projects, uh, whether that be on Final Cut Pro 10 or in Premiere After Effects, use that on my MacBook, come back home, I have my iMac, bigger, um, a bigger screen, and uh, just more of a cooling system than my MacBook Pro. So that's the decision that I made. But all in all, friends, you know, if you're looking for this video to tell you to buy the 2017 iMac, you know, or if you're looking for some way to like number crunch um, a PC versus iMac, I think you have to be realistic about it. You know, um, regardless of what you use, Photoshop's gonna crash, Pre Premiere's gonna crash, Final Cut Pro 10 is going to crash, you know, your computer in general is going to crash, right? Um, so it's really about like what you do, what you use, and also what environment you're in. And those are the three things that I think are going to help you guys out in your purchasing decision for the 2017 iMac. Am I going to get one? I think I will, uh, maybe at the end of the year or in maybe next year. Right now, my 2015 iMac, it still works fine. You know, I got 32 gigs of RAM. I have uh, two external SSDs now just because I can offload certain things with Premiere and After Effects. I have my 2016 MacBook Pro, so I'm covered there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I have. Would it be nice to have the 2017 model? For sure. But as a cinematographer, I have exactly what I need on the post-production side. I don't need anything else. If anything, I just have to keep doing what I do. And that's being passionate about my work, passionate about the gear that I have and to keep creating. I think that if anything is the main point in um, any of these videos, guys, you know, especially like a tech review is look at what you need, look at what you have, what can you maximize? And from there, spend your uh, money wisely on what you exactly need that can help you create better videos, better films, um, better paintings, whatever it is. So I hope that helped you guys out in any way. Feel free to contact me, leave me a comment down below, uh, send me a message, whether that be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or even YouTube message. I'd love to hear from you guys. Other than that, my name is David, Modern Tech Philosopher. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.